Join us for lively discussion about the A-State community. Each week, we'll meet with a variety of faculty, staff, and students to discuss all things Arkansas State University. Live from the ASU TV studios in the School of Media and Journalism, this is A-State Connections. And this is A-State Connections on KASU and ASU-TV. You can also listen by searching for Red Wolf Radio on Spotify or wherever you get your podcast. I'm Jonathan Reeves, Academic Advisor for the School of Media and Journalism and the Department of Communication at Arkansas State. Well, today we talk about an important program that helps students with collegiate writing. Telling us more about the First Year Writing Program at Arkansas State is the Director of First Year Writing and Assistant Professor of English, Dr. Kristen Ruccio. Thanks for joining us today. We really appreciate you. Thank you for having me. It's an honor to be asked. Before we talk about your role at Arkansas State with First Year Writing, I want to get to know you a little bit. Tell us about yourself and how you came to Arkansas State. Well, I'm from Western Kentucky, and my parents are elderly, so I was hoping to get in the region. But oddly enough, I had actually accepted a position at another university when I got the call about a campus visit here. I thought, I can squeeze this in, and I came, and it was the best experience I had out of the entire academic job market. I visited about eight campuses on my journey to becoming a professor, right. and this one was the most humane. It felt the most like home. I love the campus, and I've fallen in love with Arkansas, so here I am. One of, one of the things about Arkansas State is that it is uh, intimate enough by way of being able to develop those family-like uh, relationships very quickly, not just the people you work at, but also with, uh, with students, too. Yeah, definitely. That's yeah. one of the best things about here. So how long have you been here at Arkansas State? Um, this is my fifth year. So Awesome. Um, five years. Very good. So tell us about your role at Arkansas State and what do you do? A lot. Um, <laughs> I definitely will not bore the audience with a recitation of all of it, but um, as director of first-year writing, I work with the composition faculty. There's about 13 of us, and we work from a shared curriculum. So every student who's taking comp at Arkansas State is going through the same stages um, so that they have a sort of solidarity with their cohort. They can help each other with their projects. Um, so we're always constantly thinking about how to make that curriculum better, to sort of tap into that familial community feeling that we have at A-State. Um, for example, uh, me and Dr. Bennett, we just rewrote our in-house textbook that we use for composition. Um, it's called Writing with the Pack. Um, and we also revised our learning outcomes to express more of the reality of our students and what they want to take out of composition. I work on a lot of committees. Um, mm -hmm. I'm co-chair of the uh, Recruitment and Retention Committee for English, and I'm also on the College of Liberal Arts and Communications Recruitment and Retention, because that's I really like working with that. Fantastic. Um, lots of stuff like that, and my own research, so. Very good, so uh, you, you Lots of things that are taking place there. And also working with the students, I know it's very important in what you do there. Because one of the challenges it seems that some students will have is, is getting used to writing on a collegiate level. Mm -hmm. What are some of the challenges that can lead to these problems? I've thought about this a lot, because I've taught writing for about 12 years um, before I came here. I think it's because they've, they've had math in high school, they've learned history. But college writing is kind of this unknown entity. Um, so we try to, the first thing we try to familiarize our students with is that they are already writers. They're writing on Snapchat, they're writing on Facebook, and we teach a genre-based approach. So we're trying to teach genres that will serve our students throughout their journey here at A-State. Um, so I'm just, we often talk about how you're already doing this, we're just gonna put it in a slightly different package. And be aware of who your audience is. That's one of the big things about the rhetorical triangle that we teach. So has the teaching method changed over the years with how you've been having to teach this to uh, students? Absolutely. Um, so if this were the 90s, say, or maybe the 80s is more fair, which I know seems like forever ago to many of our students, but People would do like fill in the blank thesis statements and they have, they can be helpful, but we do more of a student empowered kind of curriculum mm -hmm. where they're writing something like a rhetorical analysis where they're, they're looking at the rhetorical appeals and how people are persuaded by like commercials and stuff, but they pick their own 
texts to analyze. So I had students who did um, the Gettysburg Address this semester. I had students who did two Pizza Hut commercials because the, the, the appeals appear in all of those things. It's just a different package, which also helps them translate that to their own work. But right. um, they do a lot of their own gathering of data and things like that. I think also what's interesting, especially on the media side, is that it used to be, going back to the 80s, 90s, and that I first got into radio in 93, and I remember that there would be more longer commercials. You, you could write for 60-second commercials. You could write 30-second commercials. And it seems like nowadays you have to tailor things that would be something you'd have on Netflix or whatever, 10-second commercials, 15-second mm -hmm. commercials, even if that. You know, so it's a different kind of writing style. And that, that, I think that also is a fascinating component of that, too, is that we have to say the same things, but a lot of times it's in shorter, mm -hmm. shorter bits. Oh, there's plenty of data that the American attention span is shrinking. Um, I was just talking to my persuasive writing class about that on Monday. Um, we don't necessarily have to sit in judgment about that. It, it is. So we have to tailor our writing, especially if we're trying to persuade an audience to these new realities. So. Right. So what, is, what are the ways that you and your faculty try to address some of those challenges and be able to try to help students uh, as they're struggling with uh, composition classes? Well, the interesting thing that often happens is that once they get that first project under their belt, they realize, I do know how to do this. So we spend a lot of time building community in the classroom. We do a lot of free writes together, which is where the teacher might give a prompt and then the students write for a certain amount of time. Um, and we, we sneak in ways of making that about college level writing, even if it might seem like a fun activity. I mean, we're not fooling our students or anything like that. We're just making it familiar because that's the thing is that it seems so unfamiliar when they first step into that composition classroom. And it's not, it's stuff they already know how to do. Um, and it's just the reality too. Again, we, we teach them to get to the point more quickly than maybe we would have, um, because writing changes. I mean, we're not writing like Cicero did, for example, now. Sure. No right. one would read it, um, for right. one thing. Even in academic writing, in my own research, like there's a real push to not be so wordy. Like, I'm not the only one who does that, but there's a, there's sure. a general trend to, to get to the point quicker and have shorter monographs and things like that. So the way we help is by telling them that um, this is no different than much of the writing you've done all of your lives. And it, uh, always there's a satisfaction level when students you know, gain that confidence they're able to write more effectively. I know that's one, probably one of the more rewarding parts uh, of that, being able to that's see wonderful. students and how to be able to do that. Yeah, um, and the genres we take them through through Comp 2, the hope is that they'll be able to, they'll already have the ability to write any paper that they will come across at A-State because they're familiar with the genre and it won't seem like they're starting fresh. Why is this writing important for students to learn? Do I give the short answer or the, you know, 80-minute answer? I'm just kidding. I'll give the short answer. <laughs> because we have to do it every day. Um, with email, with social media, um, there's every job has some aspect of writing. And so it's important to be able to express yourself so that you can move through the world in ways that you want rather than being subjected to someone else's persuasion. You can be the one making those decisions. It really is about empowerment and fitting in with uh, you know, our technological and modern realities. One of the ways we help is that we always have at least one multimodal project in Comp or Comp 2, Comp 1 or Comp 2, because you have to be able to do audiovisual things now. Um, right. It's just part of our lives. Right, exactly. And the benefits of learning how to write? Oh, did, yeah. Um, you look like a better job candidate, which I think is what most of us want. Um, you're, you seem like a more educated person because you are. And you learn how to express yourself. Like, that can translate to, to your job, to your personal life. If you wanted to ever be a creative writer, you've now got the building blocks to be able to expand that writing. And, and so, is, is this open to all of the composition students? Or how does that work by way of, of uh, you know, who can help, you know, who are involved in this, who can maybe, if they're having some challenges and being able to, to be involved in, in 
maybe addressing some of those challenges? Is that open to the composition students? It is open to all the composition students. Our faculty are, we, we keep our course cap low. Um, we're, right now we're at 18 mm -hmm. because the, the most significant uh, factor in a student coming out of a composition sequence with success is having access to the teacher. So we will work one-on-one -on -one with our composition students. They can go to the writing center, which is in the library. Yes. Um, and we have the communication center for our comm students. Um, but yeah, just one-on-one. -on -one and as I'm always happy to talk to students who aren't necessarily in my class as director. I try to do a lot of outreach with right. things like that too. Right, I know that's important, an important aspect as well. Do you have students working with you uh, on this uh, in the first year writing? We do. Uh, right now we have three. Uh, we're always looking to expand. I, we were talking about grants beforehand, and I'm trying to get some grant money so that we can expand this program. Yes. We have a digital literacy pilot. We're in our third semester now. And the students, they're very heavily doing multimodal projects or using things like Adobe Suite or um, Prezi to, to have more of the presentation and writing combo. Um, and we have three tutors from the graphic design program who are embedded in three of our composition classes. And the students in those pilot sections, they're doing like professional level work. It's really amazing. That's fantastic. We're going to continue talking about this here on the other side of the break. The Director of First Year Writing and Assistant Professor of English at Arkansas State University is Dr. Kristen Ruccio. We'll continue with the conversation and we'll be right back after this. This is A-State Connections. When you say experience counts, it's experience that counts for a lifetime. Boxes, boxes, I cannot fit in the boxes. Stop it, stop it. Quitting was never an option. Exhausted, exhausted. This passion is never exhausted. And you cannot stop it. Nah, you cannot stop it. Quitting was never an option. Red Wolf Radio is a student-led organization at Arkansas State University wanting to hear your takes on pop culture, music, the news, and college life. Just about anything you can think of. Located in the Education and Communications building on campus, we are always looking for more volunteers. So if you're an Arkansas State University student, no matter the major, and this is something that interests you, shoot us an email at redwolfradio at astate.edu. That's redwolfradio at astate.edu. Let them hear you how. At Arkansas State, we want you to go. Go where learning soars, takes flight, and rockets ahead. Go for experiences, internships, and scholarships. We want you to go. Become A-State main. Are you ready to go? Go.astate.edu for details. Live from the ASU TV studios in the School of Media and Journalism, this is A-State Connections. And welcome back to A-State Connections on KASU and ASU TV. I'm Jonathan Reeves. We're continuing our conversation today by talking about the first year writing program at Arkansas State. Director of first year writing and assistant professor of English, Dr. Christian Ruccio joins me here today. And welcome back. We appreciate you. Uh, thanks for joining us here on the second segment. Thanks. So one thing also we didn't mention is that you're the advisor for a minor that is uh, something I, that a lot of my students, when I advise them, uh, in especially with multimedia journalism, because they need a minor for that, is writing studies. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the writing studies program. So writing studies is my own field. Like, most people think English, they think literature, and I love literature. I'm sure. happy to, but write, rhetoric and composition and writing studies are what I have my PhD in. And it's it sort of straddles the line between a social science and a humanities writing combo. So we have three tracks with the writing studies minor. Um, we have professional writing, which you would take classes like technical writing, practical writing, persuasive writing, and then maybe a couple of um, 
electives. It's an 18 hour minor, as most are. Right. Uh, then we have the creative writing track, which you focus on creative writing classes. The general track, you can kind of mix and match. If you're not 100% sure what you want to go into, the, the general track is probably a, the best choice. Um, I love advising for it. It's, it's a great combination with a lot of our STRATCOM or media and communications majors because you're like the double threat. You can, you can speak and you can write. That makes you uh, much more... Uh, diverse as a candidate, you've got right. a larger skill set to show. So we think about the, the creative writing, and we mm -hmm. talk about that, and we can imagine you know, like authorship and that. But what what else does the creative writing aspect go into by way of that that particular track? Um, well, Dr. Kim Ariel is our uh, lead creative writer, and he's just put out a slew of books very recently. And he is mostly a fiction writer, but he also does some creative nonfiction. So, uh, and we're, we're, we're currently looking for a poetry creative writing uh, professor. So okay. we'll, we'll have everything available by fall is the hope. Right. Um, although okay. Dr. Ariel has been great with uh, filling in that gap since our poetry professor has left. Um, and I think creative, I, I say that all writing is creative. He might disagree with me about that a little bit, but it's really all emanating from your own brain, your own life experiences. But creative writing just gives us more leeway. There's more genres open. You can tell different kinds of stories, I think, with creative writing. Yeah, now on the other track, where would that be uh, helpful uh, for people to be able to get that uh, the other track? Definitely the professional writing track, uh, people who want to be tech writers. Uh, there are so many places in our region. Um, I lived in Huntsville, Al Huntsville, Alabama for 13 years. Mm -hmm. There are so many jobs for tech writers and it's only about a three and a half hour drive from Jonesboro. So um, tech writing, any sort of, I just had a major graduate and she does all of the um, multimodal kind of presentations for an insurance company in Little Rock. So mm -hmm. it really sets you up for a variety of jobs that might not seem obvious at the first point. It is them. so important to be able to, to do that. Yeah. And it's a great minor uh, for well, because not only would it fit for media journalism uh, or that, it would fit basically just about anywhere, I would imagine. Uh, almost all of our um, teaching majors, our, our Bachelor of Science in Education majors take the writing studies minor. I have several business students who are also writing studies minors because it just gives you that, perhaps that edge. If somebody's looking at your resume and they say, oh, this person can also write, that's a skill that's really needed. We Very have to good. write all sorts of things. Lots of research. And that's one thing we did talk about is that Arkansas State uh, is uh, one of the universities that really puts a focus on undergraduate students being involved in research. Mm -hmm. Very important part of that, being an R2 institution. And you were telling us, uh, telling me off air about how excited you were about a student who is, uh, you know, right, who's been writing and, and is involved in, in that, which was kind of one of the rewarding parts of your job. Mm -hmm. But, but yeah, talk about, you know, that, that part of that, because that's, that is so important to be able to have students involved in, in that aspect of the research and the writing of that research. Well, we're, we're always looking for opportunities for our students to take their work to the public, to the community. So Composition 2 actually ends with something we call the First Year Composition Colloquium. Um, and it next Wednesday, the 15th, whichever day is the 15th, we will be in the Student Center um, in Centennial Hall with the colloquium. And they all, it's their, the culmination of their semester-long project, which they present to the university community. And we invite um, the other teachers, other comp students to come. But um, before COVID, we had it as much more of a community event. But we also have students who present um, at Created A State. Uh, we, I, this, if this student goes on to be published, it'll be my second undergrad who's been published in a peer-reviewed journal. And all of our composition instructors are always looking for these kind of excellent projects. We also have a, a website for the colloquium. If you just search our website for a for a first year uh, composition colloquium, you can see past product projects that our students have done. Could you give an example of maybe one of those projects that students have done in the in, the, in that. Uh... Yes, one of our students last semester, she did an infographic about education pre and post COVID in higher ed. Um, we've had students do projects about staying healthy while 
uh, living in the dorms and how to like cook for yourself. We've had, I have a student now who's proposing a project about infrastructure in Arkansas. Uh, I had another student who did a project about controlled burning and how it's an, an excellent necessary part of agriculture in our region. So they're as varied as our students are. And so it's fascinating that what we, we get to see each semester. What do you love the most about your job? Working with the students. Um, I love working with my colleagues. I think we have the best set of faculty on campus. I may be biased a little bit about that, but working with our students, they're just so, most of the, I'm, well, I don't know for most, at least 40% of the students I teach are first generation students, which means neither mom nor dad uh, graduated with a BA or a BS. So right. they're new to the culture of college, but they're so eager to learn. It's just wonderful. Yeah, and, and what it means for them and then their families in the future. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just, it's, it's great. It, it, it's just something that just keeps paying the dividends. Yeah. You know, and that to be able to do that. So, yeah, I would agree about, we've got some of the best students here uh, by far uh, and best faculty as well. We appreciate you joining us today. We really do. Before we let you run, is there anything else you would like to add today about the writing studies program or about first year program? I'm, I'm always happy to answer questions about writing. Um, we are working on a, we have a innovations committee in first year writing right now, the, the composition faculty. Uh, Ms. Leslie Reed is chair, but we have a great group. We are working on having a community because the Career Center will help our students with resumes. But we're going to have a resume writing workshop in February, uh, working with the, the Delta Economic Center mm -hmm. here on campus. Yeah. And then we're in March, when the weather's, maybe April, when the weather's starting to get nicer, we're going to have a nature writing evening, um, partnering with uh, the Craighead Center, the Nature Center is yeah. what it's called. Yeah. yeah. So we're, we're excited. Now that COVID has calmed down, sure. we are going to start really pushing uh, to have a community presence with the writing program. And that community involvement is so crucial, mm -hmm. you know, because it, it, it's, well, of course, there's the recruitment, as you say, the, the retention part of that, which is so important, but mainly recruiting people to be able to come to Arkansas State. This can be their home, too. Yeah. So, absolutely. Well, thank you for being part of this today. Thank you for having me. Really appreciate you. Come back anytime. Thanks. Okay? Now that'll do it for this edition of A-State Connections on KASU. I want to thank my guest, Dr. Kristen Riccio. I also want to thank Creative Media Production Instructor Galen Perkins and his amazing students who are always running the show behind the scenes, doing a fantastic job. Thanks to engineers Clayton Holderfield and Jacob Keene for their help, and thank you for watching. We'll have another edition of A-State Connections next Wednesday at 1.30, and once again, you can listen to this episode of A-State Connections by searching for Red Wolf Radio Podcast on Spotify or wherever you get your podcast. So long, everyone.